Hello and welcome to another episode of Pakistani Profile. My guest for today is an education and a communication specialist with almost a over 15 years of experience in these two fields. She is Bina Raza. Thank you so much, Bina, for being part of our show. Thank you for having me here. Right, Bina, um, we're going to start off talking about your childhood. Tell me about your experience as a child and any memory that you hold still till date. Well, as a child growing up in the 60s, yeah, it was a very, very different world Right. back then. And um, I do remember, I have some memories of the 1965 war. So, yeah, that's one of, uh, I think, uh, a memorable or a significant uh, moment in my life as a child. Right. When we had to um, run from Karachi to Lahore because we, you know, there was war. And mm. I really couldn't understand war at that time. but. Mm. Um, but then, of course, you know, asking questions, and um, so that was uh, one of my most significant memories as a child. Okay, talking about experiencing a war, mm. how did that affect you as a child, and how did that affect you as a, on your personality? Uh, it was very fascinating because I I remember vividly that. We used to, when the, the siren used to go off, yeah. you know, for the air raid attacks, so we used to hide in bunkers and um, and I hear, heard people that, oh, India has attacked us. Right. And, um, and I used to wonder, okay, why are we fighting? Because at that time you couldn't figure out exactly what was happening. I couldn't figure out. I couldn't figure out. But it kind of became almost like something which is very acceptable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yes. Uh, I was very intrigued, but at that point in time, I never really got a valid response. Mm. Till again, we experienced again as growing up. Right. The India-Pakistan war with Bangladesh mm -hmm. coming, you know, on its own. Mm -hmm. Half of Pakistan breaking. Right. So those were those were uh, the critical moments of of my childhood in terms of my relationship with my society. Right. But okay. of course there were personal childhood experiences Childism. as well. Right. But uh, yeah, so it, 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 it was an interesting mosaic of experiences really between all these interesting episodes and I remember Ayub Khan um, was there and the rights taking place and the student rights and one of our cousins who was shot dead in the student rights, you know, the, right. the, the rights against Yub Khan, then the Bangladesh war, then Bhutto, and then Bhutto's hanging. So it was actually um, a very, very, um, I would say, qu quite a uh, happening, happening uh, time. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And never a dull moment. Okay, that's the way to. Dull go moment. On. Never a dull moment. All right. Binan, talking about your career, okay. why did you choose to become an educationist? Um, you know, I never made that choice. Mm -hmm. um, it was just something that came very naturally to me. All right. I grew up in a household where uh, someone like my father, mm -hmm. who's a visionary and though a lawyer by profession, but um, his, his engagement was always about to understand life, mm -hmm. to be engaged with different dimensions of life. Mm -hmm. um, so we were exposed to so many different ideas, feelings and thoughts and um, which was which were really not the mainstream ideas of those times. Right. So it was um, it was an island like once I stepped out of the house and I was in school and I used to meet uh, children from different homes and I thought they were there was something different about their homes and my home right because they came from a typical you know uh, traditional mindset right. and uh, where life was very simple and thinking very linearly and okay mother father children and mm -hmm. um, all those very traditional paradigms whereas in my household there was politics there was Fez and at Fez coming and uh, all kinds of people coming. My father going to prison for different reasons, political reasons mainly. 
and so it was an open house where we saw people come in from different walks of life. Right. So one was engaged from a very young age mm -hmm. with different kinds of people. So I think it was all about communication. Right. And I felt that uh, education, so I just kind of, um, yeah, I, I just got involved with education really, not by choice, but just by who I was really. And um, that was just you. That was me, that right. was me. Whether it was verbal or non-verbal, mm -hmm. because the non-verbal side really came with my uh, uh, interest with music, which again was mm -hmm. because of the kind of environment I, I grew up in. Right. We were exposed to music and my father was very passionate about music. Right. So we had a music teacher and I learned the sitar right, since exactly. the age of eight. Yeah. So it was all about uh, interaction with people and so uh, education was really seen as a means to communicate. And you being interact. one of the first Pakistan female sitar player at that time, still? Well, not at that time. When I was learning sitar at the age of eight, I was not thinking. I, in fact, it was more of a pain coming from school and you had your music teacher sitting, uh, sitting and, and, and I was number four, so I was the fourth one in line. So my whole intention was to dodge my teacher. Mm -hmm. But in that interesting, nice way, because remember, we grew up in times when we did not have technology. We, of course, had the television, but, you know, television time was very restricted. Mm -hmm. So well, there were not too many distractions. So this was a good distraction to be doing things other than your homework. Your study. Right. Uh, so, you know, either it was being outdoor, climbing mm -hmm. trees, just, just, this some activity. Some activity. Right. So this was a, a, a good distraction, mm -hmm. really. And uh, yes, I was somewhere inside me, there was a musician, I guess. Right. So it was only with time. And once I was in college, I realized, OK, this is something I'm serious about. So I, I continued my musical education and training with um, my teacher, right. Ustad Shujat Khan, who's Delhi-based. Okay. And he's from the famous um, Daiki Gharana of Ustad Balayat Khan right. and Imdad Khani Gharana. Yeah. And uh, so I was very fortunate to, um, yeah, to, to... And talking about your love for music, you eventually um, introduced one of the undergrad programs in the National College of Arts. Tell me more about it. Yeah, okay. So, um, as I mentioned that my father, other than being a lawyer, he's, uh, he's what you call a polymath, a man who's uh, interested in everything. He just has a curious mm -hmm. mind. And I think the whole spirit of inquiry and um, wanting to understand life and right. the human mind, that right. was the real uh, motivation behind his engagement with different right. uh, interests and pursuits in life. Mm -hmm. And music was one of them. So um, he had set up an institute called Sandinagar Institute of exactly. Philosophy and Arts. Yeah. And uh, at that point in time, I'm talking about 1999, um, the principal of National College of Arts, uh, Sajda Bandul, approached uh, the institute and requesting them to set up the first musicology department, uh, which was a four-year undergraduate program, like, a main, like any other mainstream program mm. offered at National College of mm -hmm. Arts. Uh, because it, it, as you know, it's a, it's a very old college, and yeah. it is one of the, uh, you know, one of the best best ones, uh, set up by the British. It used to be called the Mayo College of Arts. Right. So they started with uh, visual arts. They have architecture. So they wanted to introduce musicology and film and theatre. Mm -hmm. So they approached us, and um, so the vision paper was set by my father. But we all chipped in. We contributed to the vision of how we. Mm -hmm. wanted um, a department like that right. in Pakistan. It was the first of its kind. Right. So uh, so we worked on that. And for you've also been teaching music. Yes, yes. We we worked on it for about two years. Right. We d designed the curriculum. We developed, um, you know, instructional materials, mm -hmm. resources. And then we. I personally taught for five years, actually, at uh, the college. Mm -hmm. And yes, and so you've then also been teaching at BNU, right? Yes, I taught at BNU, Beacon House National University. Um, I taught history of music, which okay. was one of the core courses being offered under the School of Liberal Arts, right. and the, again, the film and theater program. Right. Yes. Um, Bina, you've also been involved in promoting South um, Asian culture. Um, tell me more, how, how did you think about promoting this culture? Why did you feel there was a need? 
um, to basically you know make people aware of what the South Asian culture is? Well, uh, as I just mentioned, because of my involvement with music, right. and then. Um, with setting up the department at National College of Arts and then teaching at Beacon House National University. You know, when you have to teach and when you have to do research, so you get interested, mm. you know, uh, in, in these kind of areas in mm. a different way. Mm. So South uh, Asian culture was really um, an interest that I developed because of my involvement with music, music, South Asian music, classical music. But then I was involved also with an international project mm -hmm. with Plymouth State University in the state of New Hampshire in USA, in USA. and uh, the project was really focusing on Pakistani educators and exposing them to sort of you know more contemporary models of learning and teaching. So it was through that project that I thought okay here's a great opportunity for me to be engaging with an international audience because I was coordinating the project. Right. So I started um, throwing in these aspects of South Asian culture, which is really Pakistan, uh, Pakistani culture, and so because it's uh, such a rich uh, one yes, and absolutely, there's so much to tell. Uh, absolutely, because remember this is post 9/11, yeah. the, the the time I was in, involved with this project, right. and for me it was just that okay, how do I tell a good story about Pakistan? So that was a great way Challenge. to showcase Pakistan to uh, showcase the history and culture and rich culture and heritage of Pakistan. Mm. So I always used to tell the American audience and my friends and colleagues there that, you know, we, we, we are not a, a terrorist country. We have one of the oldest civilizations. Mehergarh now goes back to 7,000 years, right. uh, 7,000 BC. So we are the hub of uh, so many different cultures. We are a fusion of so many different mm. cultures. So Pakistan has such a rich history. You people talk, I, I mean, referring to the American audience, you know, you're talking about 250 years of history, 300 We're years. We're talking about seven. We are talking about 5,000 years, mm -hmm. 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. So for me, that, that's that really the beginning objective. of my interest, and right. that was the motivation. Right. So, um, and it worked very well. I got very good response. And a, in a small state like New Hampshire, mm -hmm. you know, all white, Mm -hmm. communities and they really got interested and lots of other people are I'm sure I mean portraying a yeah. completely different image so, of the country so, at that so time. So that kind of led me to kind of talk about Sufism as well mm -hmm. so I've had a few workshops there and that kind of brings me to the whole idea of branding Islam not as an extremist religion but as a very moderate secular right. Right. Um, thought really thought. yeah okay Bina your future plans what do you plan on doing from now on since you've done so much in the past what now ideally you know um we have all one life to live and we all have our dreams mm -hmm. and um and all, most mostly dreams do remain unfulfilled so my future plans nothing really concrete i am not really thinking too far ahead but i hope in my lifetime I can be in some kind of a situation where I can influence change um, in a substantive way. And um, so far, I think I've been on the right track, yeah. but I would, I would like to scale up my efforts. Mm -hmm. So politics would be a great way to, to do it, but again, uh, it's, it's very tough. Yeah. It's very tough. So I have to find some middle ground, I don't know, between uh, social activism, politics, media, I don't know. But but definitely uh, want to... Uh, an agent of change. Want to be an agent of change. Um, not just in a very superficial way, but at a deeper uh, way. Perhaps through the institute that, that my father has set up, mm. because would like to carry that legacy on. He has invested a lot, his entire life, his entire life's work, earnings into mm -hmm. that thought. So perhaps carry that legacy forward and be a torchbearer right. and um, have many more people with me on that journey of change. Right. Okay. Veena, in the end, your message for the nation of Pakistan. Well, um, my message would be to follow your dreams, be passionate about what you want to do, and be honest and truthful to, to yourself, 
to our lives and what we owe to our um, country. At the end of the day, we're all here today because what Pakistan has given yeah. us, and uh, we should be generous enough to give back. Right. Thank Something. you so much, Bina. It was great to have you on our show, and I uh, hope you have the best in life in future. Thank you very much. It's right. a pleasure being here. For more Pakistani profiles, you can visit our website, pakistaniprofiles.com.